The concept of an altered state of consciousness, ASK, synonymous with an altered state of mind or mind alteration, refers to any mental state markedly diverging from a typical wakeful state. The term has historical roots going back to 1892 in reference to hypnosis. Although contention persists around whether hypnosis fits the current understanding of ASK, further clear references can be tracked down to Max Mailhouse's 1904 conference presentation. Particularly on epilepsy scholars, including Arnold M. Ludwig, began employing the term in 1966, while Charles Tart popularized it from 1969. The concept explores induced shifts in one's mental state, usually transient, contemporarily referred to as altered state of awareness. Defining an ass remains complex, as it would necessitate a universally accepted definition of a normal state of consciousness. Various academic disciplines such as philosophy, psychology, and neuroscience have proposed definitions without reaching a consensus. Some widely regarded definitions acknowledge ass as any mental state, subjectively acknowledged by an individual or an objective observer, characterized by a significant deviation in one's psychological experience from general norms observed during alert, waking consciousness. Charles Tart emphasizes the individual's subjective experience of a consciousness state and its deviation from a typical waking state. He views asks as alternate patterns or configurations of experiences, qualitatively distinct from a baseline state. Tart's terminology forms the basis of Farthing's definition of ass as a profound shift in the overall pattern of subjective experiences. Farthing also proposes that an assy is either short-term or reversible and may not necessarily be recognized as an ass when occurring he credits much of his et. definition to individual subjective experiences, discounting behavioral changes and physiological responses. According to Farthing 1992 p. 205, an assy may be defined as a temporary change in the overall pattern of subjective experience such that the individual believes that his or her mental functioning is distinctly different from certain general norms for his or her normal waking state of consciousness. He includes 14 dimensions of altered subjective experience and suggests an ask requires multiple dimensions to be altered. This has become a working definition for empirical research, building upon these earlier conceptual frameworks. The human consciousness is fundamentally multi-layered, creating what we define as a phenomenological pattern. This pattern is a result of the combined independent factors that make up our consciousness, which can be measured through questionnaires. Such patterns can also be termed as variations in the fundamental dimensions of consciousness, which are crucial in empirical research. Traces of altered states of consciousness being embraced by humans can be dated back to as early as 30,000 years ago, when mind-altering plants or intense experiences like protracted dancing were used to reach a deeply ecstatic or mystical state. Historical evidence of this can be found in early religious practices such as the rites of Dionysos and the Eleusinian mysteries, yoga, and meditation, among others in the context of shamanic traditions. Practitioners would intentionally reach altered consciousness states to serve their communities. Terence McKenna theorized that the use of hallucinogenic mushrooms in prehistoric times influenced the evolution of human language and symbolism paramount religions of the world could potentially have been molded by the effective use of mind, altering substances like soma. Relevance of meditation is resurfacing in contemporary psychology, as it is recognized for its therapeutic benefits and its capacity to calm the hyperactivity of the mind. In psychotherapeutic approaches, techniques such as hypnosis and meditation support psychological restoration. The early 20th century approach to psychology, dominated by the behaviorist paradigm, disregarded altered states of consciousness as a legitimate subject of scientific study, often misconstruing them as symptoms of intoxication or demonic possession. However, a shift in perspective began with William James' exploration of altered states, including mystical experiences and drug-induced states James' first-person subjective. Experience study pushed introspection back into the academic limelight as a useful research methodology. The social revolution that swept through the 1960s further propelled the acceptance of introspection and altered states of consciousness as crucial areas of scientific investigation. Pioneers like Abraham Maslow, Walter N. Ponky, Stanislav Grof, and Charles Tart laid the groundwork, focusing on the potential positive aspects of altered states of consciousness, such as their capacity to boost creativity and help treat addiction. Notably, Pockinkey's renowned Good Friday experiment unveiled that mystical experiences could be instigated by psilocybin, 
a theory later supported by the subsequent research of Rick Doblin. During this modern enlightenment, Stanislav Grof and his contemporaries initiated the transpersonal psychology domain that emphasized the supreme importance of individual human experience, the validity of mystical and spiritual experiences, and the profound interconnectedness of the self with others and the world. Abraham Maslow's study on peak experiences sheed light on the moments of maximum happiness and fulfillment, marking a progressive step away from treating altered states as pathological conditions. Altered States of Consciousness asks, are the theme at the heart of this exploration in an attempt to classify and understand their origins and experiences. Multiple scholars have worked towards categorizing asks within a much larger context, each focusing on slightly different aspects. Vedal, for instance, broke down askus into five categories, each detailing the means by which consciousness was altered. The categories range from spontaneous alterations, as experienced in daydreaming or near-death experiences, to intentional inductions. Various dimensions of experiences associated with ASCIs have been proposed by multiple authors. Vedal's system is founded on four basic aspects, activation, awareness span, self-awareness, and sensory dynamics. While Fisher presents them as either ergotropic, ecstatic experiences, or trophotropic, meditative experiences. On his end, Adolf Dietrich isolated three foundational dimensions of consciousness, alterations brought about through different methods. These elucidate a sense of limitless expansiveness, fear of eco-dissolution, and transformative visions. Recognizing the individualistic nature of ASCSEs, Ken Wilbur elaborates a multidimensional system while acknowledging that a person's unique psychological evolution shapes their AS experience. Additionally, Michael Winkleman introduces four distinctive consciousness modes, a framework in which many assess, e.g. psychedelics, hypnosis, meditation, are identified as integral modes. Simply put, an altered state of consciousness signifies a temporary change in one's personal experience leading to a marked difference from their regular consciousness. This alteration can occur through multiple forms, especially the use of psychoactive drugs which have the capacity to cross the blood-brain barrier disrupting normal brain function, resulting in changes in perception, attitude, awareness, and behavior. Cannabis, known for inducing altered consciousness state, interferes with mental activity, memory, and pain perception. Effects such as heightened sensitivity, delayed responses, or possible paranoia are experiences that are not normally observed in the usual conscious state. A relationship between frequent cannabis use and higher anxiety levels was noted in a 2009 review, suggesting anxiety. Prone individuals might be self-medicating with cannabis. Another influential drug, MMA, also known as ecstasy, significantly alters consciousness. Its influence is marked by an increase in positivity and a decrease in negativity, often enhancing emotional openness, lowering inhibitions, and fostering a sense of connection to others. L. Elst, a powerful psychedelic drug, stimulates serotonin receptors in brain regions such as the cerebral cortex, a hub for perception, cognition, and self-awareness. The dominantly psychological and emotional effects precipitated by LS range from panic to bliss and may lead to a spectrum of altered consciousness. Furthermore, in the initial phase of an LS trip, users may experience eco-death or the dissolution of self-identity, similar to the effects of substances such as alcohol and cocaine. Alcohol, another consciousness, altering substance works by modulating levels of different neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers in the nervous system. It amplifies the inhibitory effects of GABA in the brain, leading to sluggish movements and speech often seen in excessive drinkers simultaneously. It suppresses the activity of excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate, adding to its overall physiological slowdown effect, alcohol also elevates them. Levels of dopamine, a neurotransmitter associated with reward and pleasure, contributing to its addictive potential. Shifting to the territory of experientially induced altered states of consciousness, strong emotions or unexpected events can irrevocably change consciousness. Basically, both accidental and pathological triggers can lead to initially diminished self and environmental awareness, which paradoxically progresses to a hyper-aware altered state. Traumatic experiences, such as a violent blow to the brain, are classic examples of accidental alterations of consciousness. These incidents divert blood flow within the brain, impairing the prefrontal cortex, a region fundamental for rational thought consequently. 
the individual experiences behavioral changes and diminished self-awareness, marking the entry into an altered state of consciousness. Therefore, through a multitude of external and internal catalysts, including drugs, disease, or trauma, the brain is able to transition between its normal state to vastly different altered states of consciousness, manifesting in a range of cognitive and behavioral changes. This narrative examines the behavioral and cognitive alterations in epileptic patients during a seizure, realized through a study using functional magnetic resonance imaging IFMRI. These alterations, including hallucinations and dissociation from reality, offer compelling insights into the nature of altered states of consciousness, ASC. Oxygen deficiency emerges as a significant focus area with implications on brain function and the onset of AS. Similarly, infections also form an integral part of AS narratives, primarily meningitis considering its propensity to incite brain swelling. Webb, a reputable source in the medical domain, pinpoints fevers and seizures as symptoms of viral meningitis, an ask a causative factor prevalent in young adults and children once seizures begin. It's clear that an altered state of consciousness has been entered. In. Sleep deprivation, chronic or temporary, also plays a critical role in the onset of ASS by eliciting seizures and hallucinations. A study from Harvard Medical School in 2007 reveals that a sleep-starved brain struggles to maintain control of sensorimotor functions, disrupting self-awareness and inducing clumsiness. Voluntary deprivation, typical in instances of fasting, religious practices, or anorexia, also contributes to us due to the ask due to the accompanying self-imposed starvation, which can potentially be life-threatening. The subsequent reality Divorcing experience categorizes fasting as an ass progenitor. Additionally, the story delves into psychosis or psychotic episodes, highlighting symptoms like paranoia, delusions, derealization, depersonalization, depersonalizations, and hallucination. However, predicting the risk factor is ambiguous due to the lack of comprehensive studies early intervention may stave off severe disorders emanating from psychosis. It's crucial to continue uncovering the elusive nature of this condition. The entropic brain hypothesis proposed by Robin Carhart Harris in 2014 presents a theory that utilizes neuroimaging studies of the hallucinogen, induced brain state to speculate about other states of consciousness. It applies the term entropy to represent the disorder associated with various states of consciousness and their related neurodynamics. This theory distinguishes between two primary modes of cognition, primary and secondary consciousness. Primary consciousness, marked by unrestrained cognition and high entropy neurodynamics, encompasses states like the psychedelic state, rapid eye movement sleep phase, and the initial stage of psychosis. In contrast, secondary consciousness, characterized by controlled cognition and orderly neurodynamics, includes conditions like normal wakefulness, anesthesia, induced unconsciousness, and depression. According to the theory, the brain can transition from normal waking consciousness to the primary psychedelic state through the use of psychedelic substances like psilocybin. This transition between these distinct levels of consciousness is earmarked by a breakdown in the structured activity within the default mode network. Dim and a disconnection between the dim and the medial temporal lobes, which are typically very closely connected. This hypothesis underscores the research potential exploring the psychedelic state could have for deepening our understanding of overall human consciousness. Substantial scientific research has been carried out to investigate the connection between altered states of consciousness and drug interactions with brain receptors, namely the neurotransmitter serotonin and the impact of psychedelic substances on the brain. It has been suggested that hallucinogens act either as antagonists or agonists at serotonin two receptors, creating a state with parallels to the initial stages of schizophrenia spectrum disorder. These revelations suggest that abnormalities in the serotonergic system could play a significant role in psychiatric disorders, such as schizophrenia and related conditions. Thus, serotonin agonists or antagonists might contribute to treatments for conditions like schizophrenia. The c skex cortico striato thalamo cortical loop model further investigates the underlying mechanisms that facilitate such reactions based on concrete neurobiological evidence. The suggested disruption of the CC loop system is believed to have a substantial effect on how information is processed. This includes our capacity to filter out unnecessary stimuli and focus attention on influential facets of our surroundings. 
It suggested that a malfunction in these mechanisms designed for focusing attention could overwhelm individuals with excessive sensory and cognitive stimuli processing, leading to cognitive breakdowns and confusion in identifying the self. Moreover, it could trigger an inability to assimilate an overabundance of information. These effects are thoroughly discussed in works exploring schizophrenia and the impact of hallucinogenic drugs. Despite solid evidence establishing a link between serotonin and psychosis, new research indicates that some behavioral impacts of substances such as psilocybin may not depend on the traditional actions of the 5 hydro receptor, agonist. This suggests that the model discussed here isn't the sole framework at work future interdisciplinary studies aim to explore the amalgamation of serotonergic and glutamatergic models of psychosis with dynamic neurotransmitter interactions. This approach roots from the study of hallucinogenic drugs.